Good evening, Trinidad Tobago. I'm talking to a friend. She um, she blacked out and she she fell and she got damaged. So I was just trying to find out more about it. Um, today is let me not get confused. Today, somebody told me last that I'm like a lion. Once you interfere with my tribe, I get really it, it because I want to be able to help everybody. I want to be able to protect everybody and look out for everybody. Is what drives me. I was psychologically diagnosed as having an overdeveloped norm of reciprocity, and you could research that. A norm of reciprocity, and I like justice, and I like to know that everybody has an equal opportunity, and it it it, it what drives me. I've overdeveloped compassion. Anyway, today is Wednesday, 16th August, 2017. Last night was hot like Amaruga and Scorpio and Pepper. We said so. Tonight we're going to be, well, we're going to try to be a little love session. Yeah? We're not going to be as, you see, a shaved, I want a shirt. You're looking like people. Right. Um, but before we get into anything else, I have a friend that I need to call because if you were following the news, you would have seen that there was a shootout this morning four blocks up from four roads on the point on the pity valley moncoco road and my friend was in the car behind and she wanted to give the story as to what she saw hi good evening you're live you're hearing me you're hearing me yeah okay you're live now and you don't have to give your name but i was hoping that you would let trinidad know what you experienced this morning being in the car behind that car when the shootout took place? Well, I mean, words can't really describe. I was just 8.40 in the morning, you know, going to work, normal Wednesday, and then I hit BAP. So I think, okay, car crash. Turn the corner. As I turn the corner, I see these two men with each have a gun in their hand. I don't know what to do, so I just pause in shock, thinking they're going to come and rob me. So, when that happens, you know, what do you do? Obviously, you freeze in, in fright. So, I froze. Do they basically took the guns, waved them in the air, just to make sure the permits are clear after shooting the car. So, the car ended up perching up on the side. And mm -hmm. then, the men basically made sure the perimeter was clear and then the car as they left the car the car drove off and the two men ran down the side street and yeah so you you saw the actual shooting i didn't see i saw the i heard the first shot i turned the corner i saw i just saw the men by the car and then i heard another shot so well you know have you, I, I heard on the news that um, the guy was able to escape by driving away. Did you see that? Yeah, he drove off. Um, he sped off. He sped off from the scene. Yeah, and then, well, I, you know. Got out of there. I don't, yeah, I basically, I froze because at first I was like, what do I do, you know? But then eventually I drove off and then as I drove off, yeah, the car just disappeared. Um, they said that he survived. I heard that on the radio. I don't know if that is still the case, that he was nursing wounds. He went, he drove himself to St. James Medical Center and then they took him to the General Hospital for surgery. Wow. And they said, well, he, he got two shots, one in his abdomen and one in his leg, according to the arm. But what did it look like to you, a robbery or what? Crazy. You, you don't know? I honestly, I don't know. It looked like it could have been a hit. I don't know, it, it, it was just suspicious. Obviously, the man knew he was going to pass there, or else it wouldn't have been, you know? So you think that that's what it might have been? People were waiting on somebody to shoot them there? I mean, possibly. I, I can't say, but I originally thought they were robbing robbed the car because I froze, and I was like, okay, I can rob next. Like, that's basically what came to my mind when I first saw it, and then they, you know, looked around and then ran so you straight down the side street. So that's when you realize they came specifically for the person in that car. Yeah. So I realized I was, you know, somewhat safe, but still uh, were you unbelievable. Sh were you shaken up, traumatized? Yeah, definitely. It's like, you can't even drive down your main road to go to work at 8.40 in the morning. All right. Well, thanks a lot for telling the story. I want you yeah. to get some rest. And we will talk later and I'll give you some tips as to how to deal with that trauma because it is a lot there, eh? but 
Yeah. It definitely is, and people should know. You know, it's it's not. It really you don't realize until it hits you, and it's really not safe. You were that close to being in a situation where, for the wrong move, your life could have been over. Yeah, if I was ten seconds earlier, I would have been right in that mix. And I was at half past eight this morning. Yeah. On PT Valley Main Road, close to the, I guess that is where they do the Western Union money it's thing. It's close money to the ground. A&L Pharmacy. Right, right, right. So that's early in PT Valley. In Mount, yeah. On the Mount Coco Road. Yeah. Oh, thanks a lot, my friend. Go and get some rest and we will talk again, yeah? I will do. Have a good night. You too. Take care. Bye. Last night, I opened the show with another friend. She was... She was exercising in a Rangwe savannah, surrounded by people. The place was crowded. Gunman up here to steal her phone and rob from her. All she had was the phone because she's in exercise gear. In, in the minute, in the minute she was worried, what did they take her? What, if, what, what could happen to her? If you go from blissful ignorance and enjoying your life in this country, whatever that means, to finding yourself in a situation where you don't know, you turn a corner. This young lady, Turned a corner this morning in middle class PT Valley. They said no hot spot. Where she was is not a hot spot. Where she was is three, four, five million dollar houses. Where she was, the street she turned out of there is middle class Trinidad and Tobago. Where are we going? We have a government that has no clue how to run this country. You have a prime minister that says there are 30,000 guns in the country. He don't explain to anybody how he come to know the exact amount of guns. And I worry because people ask me, you think that they're pushing for some kind of martial law or state of emergency? And I don't know. The only reason they could want that is if the cabalists have enough money stockpiled in the underground vaults that they don't care right now if all they do come and eat burger and chicken and chips and buy wherever they sell it. Because that's the only reason business wants to be in business and business want to make profit. Christian Boutet, who was appointed to this position by Keith Rowley, and, and this, this I, I want to come back to this because that's what I, I really, really, really want to deal with tonight because Keith Rowley has broken the law. Keith Rowley does not have the authority as prime minister to appoint anybody like that. Even his cabinet, even his ministers, Keith Rowley has to go to his excellency and ask his excellency to appoint this person. That is the law of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Keith Rowley yesterday acted outside of the law. Is this a dictatorship? Has Keith Rowley usurped the power of the state? We need to know because the people have a response and there will be a response. We're not letting anybody take our democracy. No Islamic radicals, no religious radicals, no bandits, no government, no party. We have a democracy and we the people of Trinidad and Tobago will defend it. We have to. Our first prime minister, Dr. Eric Williams said so. We have a responsibility to defend our democracy. Is Keith Rowley acting outside of the law? Does Christian Mute know that he has no authority in law now that he's been given a letter by Keith Rowley that would less than the paper at the bottom of a monkey cage? Seriously. And I use analogies like that and sometimes I cuss because I want people to know. I want you to rip the nonsense apart. I want you to throw it in the toilet. I want you to treat the behavior of these mocking pretenders like toilet paper. Used toilet paper. I want you to see it for what it is. I want them to stop fooling you. I want them to stop making you think that they have power they don't have. I told Stuart Young today, live, and I'm telling him again, Stuart Young, you threaten people today, yesterday, when you went to talk by the chamber, and you tell people who don't give information that Christian Mute will have questions to answer. Stuart Young, miss all of us with your bullshit, brother. You are the acting attorney general, and the full attorney general don't have that authority. You don't either. Stop playing police. The other day, you went inside the police administration building and call a press conference and talk as if you is police. Mr. Gentleman, watch how you come in, you know. You're very, you're dangerously close to breaking all kind of laws if you ain't break them yet, you know. Stuart Young, slow your roll. Slow it. Slow it. Alright? I know, I know, I know that the party that you're in, it's hard to maintain a position. I know that there's real turmoil and bacchanal going on inside of there. All the different little cabals fighting because their power brokers behind them trying to get their big chunk. 
I understand all of that. Because perfectly I understand that. But you, Stuart Young, are a lawyer. You're officer of the court. Stop talking shit. When you went there and you said that we will not call for a police investigation and we will wait and see if this Christian Mute investigation yields anything to pass it on to the police. But you don't have that authority. The police should have come and charge you for that statement for masquerading as police, for impersonating law enforcement. You don't have that authority. The police don't have to ask your permission. The police could come tonight and lock up Keith Rowley and you can't stop it. Because if Keith Rowley break the law, the police service don't answer to Keith Rowley separate and apart. Separation of powers. I don't want to get angry. I don't want to get angry, but stop fooling poor people. Stop fooling our innocent people, our Trinidadians, the nice and decent people. Stop pretending you have power that you don't have. You don't have them powers, breads. You don't have them powers at all. You cannot direct the police service. If you and the police service collude to act with a political um, objective, you and that police officer will make a jail. Stop pretending you have power that you don't have, Stuart Young. The power that you have is to go and sing Kung Fu Chut Me with, with Faris, dress up and thing and masquerade as Indian. Do that. Go and do that little dance and thing. That's your work. That's your work. You are the honorary Chinese in the party. That's your whole job. Every now and then, Keith will sick you on Rudal. That's your job. Pure destruction and foolishness. And we call it that. Let that be your job. Everybody have a role to play. But stop pretending that that you have any kind of authority or power over the people. You don't. The government has no power of prosecution. The government has no power of arrest. The government has no power of investigation. And stop that foolishness now. Mr. Christian Mute, you have to decide if this is what you want your legacy to be. To be a laughing stock and a joke. They are going to use your image. I am seeing your image all over Facebook. Linking you and your family with all kind of nasty, deviant, slack behavior. Is that what you wanted for your family, Christian Muti? I doubt. No matter what little appeasement, easement, right, contract, bly, whatever it is you're trying to get from the government, brother, it's not worth this. You do not have the authority. You have no standing in law. You cannot compel a witness. You can't even call for evidence. I have more authority than you as a normal everyday citizen. Why? Because I don't have Keith Rowley's stupid letter weighing me down. And you should have realized when you got a letter from the Prime Minister that didn't come from the office of the Prime Minister letterhead. That should have been red flag one. Red flag two, they spell your name wrong twice. That is disrespect. Me, I'd have sent it back. I say, I don't know who this guy is you wrote, but that ain't me. And third, and lastly, Keith Rowley without a title, who sent me this? How do I know it is you? And to the copy and paste media, because I had shared the other day, Priyanka Nankisun had ripped apart Akash Samaru, because Akash Samaru had shared a release from this government, and this is not the first, third, fifth, or tenth time that the government has put out something not on proper stationery and not signed, or if signed, not signed by an office. Keith Rowley signed that in his personal capacity. That was Keith Rowley inviting Christian Mute over by him for bears. That was not Keith Rowley giving Christian Muti an appointment of the state, Keith Rowley doesn't have that authority. And worse, he wrote it on a letter and he signed it with his name, your pal, your breads, your friend, you and me who used to pitch marbles in the river, Keith Rowley, because that wasn't from the office of the Prime Minister. Yeah? We have to, we have to be, we have to be pellucidly clear. So these people know that we know. The Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad Tobago is very, very clear as to your role and your responsibility. Keith Rowley, you did not have that power. Christian Mute, you have none. You have none. Now all you are is a national joke. What do you do now? What do you do now, Christian Mute, when you call people before you and they say, no, sir? What do you do now? What do you do when they tell you, no, thank you, I have no time for you? What do you do? What's your next step? What's your next step? So now you're a joke, Christian Mute. You're a laughing stock. What's your next step? Because I want Trinidad Tobago to know all these games that these, pol these politicians play. And I want you to know the law. I want you to know the rules. I want you to be familiar with it so you can tell them, miss me with that. No, Pally. The fellows who, who, um, 
computers they take you all go and organize your lawyers one time pre-action protocol letters to the state you all have money to get you all have money to get but this is the issue and you see last night again like a wajan because i vex i'll tell you why i vex eh? puppet david abdullah puppet david abdullah dancer boy joker man david abdullah you know what i'm talking about philip don't get vexed tonight be cool but joker man david abdullah fool for hire david abdullah clown leader of a political party msg david abdullah came into the public space two weeks ago but i was telling you something just i want to come back to it when David Abdullah came into the public space two weeks ago and he told the nation that the issue is procurement of these two vessels and the copy and paste media went to that, I said, how is that our issue? We are not procuring any vessels. The Port Authority of Trinidad and Tobago gave a contract to Bridgman Services whose responsibility it is to procure vehicles. If I hire a contractor to build a building on my property, I don't have to ask who he get the concrete and steel from. It is not our concern. And this Christian Mute appointment is a farce. But I was telling you something just someone I forgot. When Priyanka Nyan Nanki soon had ripped apart Akash Samaru, and Akash had get on like a monkey on social media, trying to defend the media's right to publish on verified nonsense and he didn't understand what she was trying to say and the and the and the more hot and hostile akash got priyanka got calmer and clearer in what she was saying that all you sell is trust that is all the media has to sell that if i see it on social media and i see it in the guardian i am supposed to believe that if it's in the guardian it true that they checked that they called but this copy and paste media because the office of the prime minister sent something to guardian media limited on no letter had a signature and they didn't send it back they didn't verify it yeah so that that all of that and all the distraction aside i want chanta bego please all the dance they're dancing all the noise they're making all of this all of this all these bells all these whistles all these shiny things they they went and pick a bald head white man to put him on the news wow that to be this had to be a serious investigation they bring a white man you know we still have little slavery days in mind that once it white and it's in authority real chinese will start to buy our stuff when foreign people say this is the real thing so chili just hide and drink sour sup but when yankees say sour sup good well boy i got sour sup since i'm small and so they went and they bring a white man a bald head one to boot so you know a bald head white man in a suit this is serious thing they didn't bring a black investigator they bring a white one so things serious and keep you ain't tired, make a mockery of the people of this country. So I want to tell you all again. I want to tell you all again. Christian Mute, the most authority he have is to ask the doubles man to put extra pepper in the doubles. He have no authority. Whatsoever. Maybe his workers. Maybe his workers. Maybe his wife. He have authority over his wife. I don't know what's going on in the bedroom. But you see, to the people of Trinidad Tobago, Christian Bute has less than zero power, less than zero authority. And to anybody that he compels or calls or requests, answer him with, miss me with that bullshit. Five words. Feel free. And to keep rolling, brother, I think that's your last. You're like a cat with nine lives. I think I'm your last one, brother. People don't expect nothing good from you anymore. Trinidad don't expect leadership from you. We just waiting. The country, the nation of Trinidad and Tobago, the people, even your supporters. A man tell me in the gym tonight, he said, boy, Philip, I hear them calling on the radio this morning and one of them sycophants on a radio show choking to answer about the Progressive Empowerment Party. And I'm watching it on Facebook too. Eh? They're running the little polls and the little sycophant groups. I see UNC forming them a mile a minute. They create one Trinidad exposes something or the other 216 members. Wait. 
and they want to be jamming people. We ain't taking that on anymore, you know. But we still need to bring it for you to see, to see the nonsense, to understand that it is not just you. It's not just you, clowns like Dane Wilson and corn beef man attacking. It's not just you because they they on their last legs. This is the last days. It's like when the last piece of rotten meat on a corpse on the side of the road coming down to skeleton. This is the last days. It done. The day of the political jackass is over. Trinidadians want information, guidance, leadership. They want empowerment. And they didn't know. They didn't know. And the PEP is everything they never knew they always needed. Because we are in this to put raw information in the public space. So this morning, when the gentleman called me from inside the bank to say, Mr. Philip, I'm sorry for disturbing you, but I'm in the bank and I'm a retiree and they say the NIS money ain't here yet. I say, who else you call me besides me? He said, I only call you. Trinidad is calling the PEP before they call the police right now. They're calling the PEP before they call the EMA. I just have to tell people you need a lawyer for that. You need a doctor for that. You need to go and talk to your member of parliament for that. The first thing they're messaging or calling is me or the party. Because they want guidance. They want leadership. They want governance. They're not getting it from this government and they don't trust the last one. Because the UNC, they know if you go to see the UNC to ask for something and you went in with $20, a full purple $20, for some reason you come back out with a five. They T15 and gear change and they didn't even know when that happened. Under no circumstances. And no, we're not going to get like Venezuela. I tell your audiences. You know and I know. We're not going to get like Venezuela. We're going to let them do their do. They're going to beat up, teeth up, try to. Do they do? We're going to let them do their do. But the momentum of what is happening in the public space has forced a shift in how politics is done in Trinidad and Tobago. So now everybody trying to get themselves into a place. When Larry Lala trying to play, putting out policy and he copying and pasting PEP policy and pretending he knew, thought that of his own. You know, there's a shift. The public is saying, if you're coming at us, come with knowledge. They like the fact that they know now that when they walk in the bank, they like the fact that they know now, not only that they were being done wrong. I go in Maria's bakery this morning to buy my cup of tea to go to a meeting. All the staff come out and the chef the head chef come out, she said, I want to know what's going on. One of my workers, they thief money out of her account, RBC. They say it was for fees and overdue fees, but the woman never come to anything like that, and, and we want to know what to do. I said, I'll come back and address you on that issue. Trinidadians no longer interested to just cock back, rock back, and take jam. They're not. So to the banksters in the banking industry, I want you to know, if the Progressive Empowerment Party government comes to power today, tomorrow there'll be regulations for banks. Prepare yourself. Don't pretend it's a rude surprise. You know you're overdue to give people interest on their deposits. So get ready. Get ready. Go and dust the archives of the rules of banking. Because the rules of banking will be two rules. You will pay interest on the money. And you will raise funds to cover the cost of the interest operations and your profits through putting credit into the economy. Because if you're not prepared to do that, we will vacate you. We will open the market. We will bring hundreds of new banks to compete with you and drive you out of business. We will make sure that the banks serve the people of Trinidad and Tobago like everything else. Like everything else. The day and, and to my friends who don't like the use of the word rape, I'm using it one more time. The day of the commercialized, industrialized, established rape of the people of Trinidad and Tobago, it's done. We want leadership, we want governance, we want empowerment, we want plans, programs, policies, we want ideas. We want you to tell us, don't just tell us why wrong and who do wrong and who thief what. Tell us, how would you fix it? How would you fix it? And you know the sycophants and the talking heads, I have to keep returning to them. They give us a wide berth now. Because the Progressive Empowerment Party, rich 
with people, critical thinkers, the average person. So when they come on a wall and they say, in this thread, in this video, when I go back after, you all make me smile. I want to tell you, I love this party, you know. You know I love this party. I, I use the word love so much. I just have to tell people on the wall. I see their posts. I say, have I told you how much I love you? Just keep talking like that. When they come on the thread and I'm talking about something and they say, yeah, but what are you going to do about it? Before I even get a chance to answer six, seven, eight, nine, ten members outlining PEP policy. They're fighting the trolls anymore, you know. They're answering the trolls. They're steering the trolls, correct? The only trolls that are giving me information to remove from the thread is the people who just come in to disrupt the conversation. Then we will block with a speed. But the rest, come. You don't have to, you don't have to agree with us to be on this wall. When the show done, every night I have to go back and watch the whole show. 2,500 comments. And I have to go and read them. Because we raise issues in the public space. And we have to take a note of what the people are saying about these things that we are proposing. And we get real good feedback. Mr. Franco had a meeting with me two days ago. And he said, what instructs your policies? I said, we advocate policy and the people respond. The people respond. Patrice King Newton, lovely lady. She's a powerhouse, force of nature. She don't give me an easy time. Me and Patrice has disagree on every other point. But every time I disagree with Patrice, I come away a little smarter, a little brighter, or a little more able to be ready to debate whoever else coming at me during the election. Because we, this morning we had a meeting seven months in. Seven months in. And they put 14 pins on a map. 14 pins on a national map of Trinidad and Tobago. One in Tobago, 13 in Trinidad. 14 pins that symbolize the 14 constituencies we are already on the ground in building out executives. And that we reach. There is going to be a meeting called a mass meeting, a rally, a pep rally, that is going to be called probably Mid Center Mall or Eddie Hart Savannah or Woodford Square or in Queens Park Savannah. We gotta go somewhere big. Because on that day, we are going to be unveiling the 41 constituency leaders and the head of finance and the and the head of membership and potential candidates, maybe even possible ministers. We're going to put, you see, we're coming out when you see the orange army. When you see it, because you know, the, the, the Sycophant squad want us to come out, cheer up, cheer up, so they can attack people. Slow your roll, brother. You will meet us as a tribe. Soon. To all the people who have not yet joined the constituency build out, if you would like to represent this party, on the ground to the constituencies Ken Biscom, Diane Mariam Kelly um, there are other members Felicia Holder of course you could still always anytime you're lost and you need guidance look for Misty Autumn Day Lima, Giselle, Keron, Ali, Dini there are people all over the thread that you will see posting stuff about the party you could just ask them and they'll guide you just reach out to them Say, I need some help with this and I need some help with that. Yeah? But I want you to know that if you ever had a, an idea, you don't have to be a candidate, you know. But you know your constituency. You don't want to be frontline, you want to be backline, because not everybody can be frontline. But you know your constituency, you know the needs of the constituency, you know the problems of the constituency. You live in there all your life, you want a better man for the constituency. You're not happy with what the PNM doing. You wasn't happy with what the UNC doing. You're willing to be part of building the new Come on board the Progressive Empowerment Party. We will give you the tools to work with. We will help you build out an executive to work with you. We drill in right down. That's our term. Drill it right down. We say teamwork makes the dream work. We have a party built on pure structure. When you reach down to a constituency executive, from there the next layer, polling stations. From there the next level, street captains. We want to know your name. The Progressive Empowerment Party wants that our policies drill down four degrees of separation, 1.3 million people. 
You don't get lost in this. You know what is wrong in Trinidad and Tobago. You know what is wrong in your constituency. And I want to tell you something. You fix it at home. You fix it in the street. You fix it in your neighborhood. You fix it in your community. You fix it in your constituency. Once 1.3 million people of us doing that, the whole place fix. Yeah? I was opening with a song. Let me take it now. I didn't tell you. Share the video now. Call your friends. Call your family. Let them know. We're on. And tonight, pure love. This is for my overseas TV. Come home. We're doing this. That's not to mean that we will forget it. 
we're not going to forget it. When we come into power, we're going to look for all the ways and means to which we can get our money back. And all those who had sticky fingers, who made their wealth through five finger discount, we don't deal with them. We are going to deal with them. We're going to make sure we stand by one people under one flag. We're going to rebuild Trinidad and Tobago, the land of hope and opportunity. Love up, love up. When we take to the streets, we're not taking to the streets in anger. When 1.3 million of us take to the streets to reclaim our country, it's with love and happiness and joyous songs of a new day. We're not coming to cuss and carry on and, and racist nonsense that these two parties sharing and selling. We're coming as one big family. 1.3 million of us want to live up to the promise of this paradise on earth. White, black, brown, green, every shade in between. We're going to unite this nation. We're going to create a place where every creed and race find their own place, their equal place. We're going to make sure justice and equality is the right of all. We're going to make sure politics and governance dovetail to deliver what they promise. You cannot go on a campaign and tell people this and tell people that and get in office and do something completely different. You have to make sure that you have a real love of people before you come to join the Progressive Empowerment Party. This is an everybody thing. So if you're a racist, stay far. Stay far. Imagine, imagine four trucks, North, East, Central, South, coming together and meeting in the center of the island. Music trucks, one massive expression of love coming together, hundreds of thousands of people. Eh? Imagine that. That's what we had to be. That's what we had to get to. And none of it sponsored by any financier. None of it sponsored by any contractor looking for work. All of it is generated by the people. We're making sure that when we get into office, the pie is shared equally, drilled right down to the ground. We have policies that empower the homeless, the indigent, the dispossessed. We have powers that we have we have policies and programs to right size and treat with the orphans. You know how difficult it is to adopt an orphan in this country. We're gonna fix that. We're going to fix that. My brother had to go to India to, uh, to make to adopt a baby. He wanted to adopt a child because he had two grown children and he wanted to adopt a child and he, and he met the most beautiful. She is one of my favorite nieces. And but but the fact that he had to go all the way to India and the, the reality of the situation, we have a lot of orphans in Trinidad and Tobago and there's no way to adopt them. There's no way. It's difficult. Our policies in this country are all crooked, twisted, make no sense. Make no sense at all. And we have to fix all of that. We have to fix all, 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 all. All of it have to fix. All of it have to fix. We have to make sure that you can, you can live a dream. The average person in this country does not know that they're entitled to dream big. And that's what we want. 
We want a nation of people. I don't want you to spend the rest of your life working for Friday to go and get drunk, to tolerate your life for the weekend, to come back in the drudgery Monday. I want you to wake up on a Monday morning celebrating your life. We want our policies to provide so many opportunities. I, you could be to, today as a lawyer, tomorrow as a concert pianist, you do what you think, what you want, what your, what your spirit is moved to do. You don't have to settle. We, are, we live in a nation where we settle, where we hold in the corner, where we avoid in victimization, where we duck in. Now we brace in. We brace in because you, you get robbed exercising. You can get robbed driving to work in the morning. This is madness and it cannot continue. It cannot continue. And neither the PNM nor the UNC are talking issues. The Congress of the people are trying to revive itself. It, dis it destroyed itself in raw, nasty, greedy, disgusting politics. They can't even have an internal election and it reached in the court. The last, the last leadership of that party collapsed with brother owing brother judgment from courts. How is that a party that you could follow? How could you want anything to do with a political party like the congress of the people who the people in the party don't even like each other nicole diagraphed carolyn c Passat bachelor and whoever the third one is fighting each other nasty nasty and then they want to come by you after and tell you one love which love which one none of these parties the msj when you listen to ansel roger and he talked about the balance when he couldn't count. When he wanted to talk about the one percent and 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 five thousand, six thousand, three hundred, the, the balance. The reason he didn't know is because he didn't care. That shows contempt for the balance. He doesn't even know how much one percent and one point three million is and how much that leaves behind because he doesn't have to care. You know why? Because for all the talk, they're talking about 1%. They're marching for their own percentage too. They want their own piece of the pie too. And that is a, how you call it? That's a family squabble. That is between them and who make promises to them. That have nothing to do with us, you know. So when Ansel Roger and the MSJ and the OWTU come to tell you to boycott in support of them, brother, miss me with your bullshit, eh? Ansel Roger, this nation have no interest in being part of you and your family squabble with PNM and the Syrian cabal that you and them sign up for. And this, again, please, people, yes, I know, it looks nasty. What the PNM has done with a handful of Syrian people and their agenda, please stop stereotyping and painting all Syrian people like that. You and I know fully well Syrian people are good, loving, decent people like everybody else. All races, all races, black, white, brown, green, every color in between, Syrian, Chinese, Jews, everybody, we've built this nation together. Let us stop letting them drive a wedge among the brethren. This concept of all Syrian bad is madness. They used to do that to black people. They used to do that to Indian people. They want to do that to Chinese people, all Chinese eating dogs. I mean, it's nastiness. I don't even want to say the stereotypes they say about all the races. We, we have to stop it. We have to stop it. The people that I am angry with, I don't want to call them 1%. I want to talk about the people who are benefiting from a disproportionate allocation of foreign exchange. I find that that is wrong. And I will boycott your business to prove a point. And any followers that I have, I will call on them to do the same. I find it is wrong that you cannot say everybody get a share in the foreign exchange. It is wrong. And wrong can be right. It's wrong. So that's who I want to boycott. But I have no problem with Syrian people. Today I bought my breakfast in Maria's and my lunch in, in Starlight Drugs. And let me tell you something. Eh? Gerald Abood, wherever your business model was for Starlight Drugs, partner, take win. Because your service, your, your quality of your products, second to none. Second to none. I, I couldn't believe. Because I drive around today thinking what to eat for lunch. And I couldn't find something to eat for lunch. And then I end up going into Starlight Drugs to buy a pack of chewing gum of all things. And found a dusty beef roti of all things being offered for sale in Starlight Drugs. It tastes good. I gave, I gave props to Good job. But I want to tell you, you cannot, 
be used as pawns in other people's race baiting games. Do not let them tell you anything stereotypical about any race. We could spend hours, possibly days, going through all the things that each race is responsible for that makes the quality of all of our lives better. So let us stop that, stamp that out. I am not interested in a discussion about a 1%. We don't have a 1% problem in Trinidad. We have a power structure problem in Trinidad. We have a financier aristocracy that became a contractocracy built on corruption that, that, that linked. Today, 6.6 .6 million pounds Price Waterhouse Coopers was fined for, for misbehavior in an international case. And that same company trades in Trinidad and Tobago, named and shamed in the Commission of Inquiry into the Interclico named and shamed for publishing fiction and they still have a charter to do accounts in this country. Worse, they still get in state briefs. Worse still, the Clico and CL financial empire that they helped destroy, they still get in work through the state in Clico and CL financial. Who are the people in charge of Price Waterhouse Coopers in Trinidad? I want to do an investigation. I want to find out how they're still in business in Trinidad. The 25 billion dollars we end up in debt that we lost that could have solved so many problems in this country bailing out that mockery that was clico was facilitated by price waterhouse coopers the leadership of that company should have make a jail real talk plain talk straight talk how much of the partners in ernst and young and price waterhouse coopers and the rest of these things end up getting to buy Apartments in one Woodbrook place for below market value as rewards. Reward for what? Why is this country treated like if I get an opportunity, fire on the rest, take all for me? Why is that? Why is that? Why are our professional class so corrupt? Why? What did we do? And I shouldn't say all because we have some fun. Fantastic professionals too. So you see, before we lose the whole plot, we need to flip the script. We need to come back to a place where everybody just loves everybody. One dollar beyond need is greed, you know. Don't think when I see you in your million dollar car that I am impressed. I see your, I see your ego. I see your frail character. Where you think that what you have determines who you are. No friend. No friend. I size you up in a conversation in the first five words you say. I don't judge people by what they have and where they live and how they could spend. Listen, one my favorite meal in the world is Baji Rice. I I you can't press me with tenderloin and, and whatever's the latest craze. You can't. You can't. I'm not interested in that. And to the people who need to flam and show off, come on a man. Intelligent people see right through you. They see right through you. They see the, the frightened child that need to hold up. Look, I have a big house. Look, I have a big walk. Look, I have a big car. Look, my brands. Look, my brands. The only brand I wear is brand Trinidad and Tobago. For years. For years. Brand Trinidad and Tobago. And you should too. You should too. We need to, we, we literally need to lead by example. We need to flip the script. We need to make sure all our communities are safe communities. The concept of gated communities is a failed notion. You cannot separate people and expect that to work because you're selling a dream in a gated community, but the security guard will live in your gated community and when the wolf reach outside your door, the same minimum wage guard that you're giving a box of food to every now and then because you're feeling sorry for him, he go anyway. Who man in your gate? Who man in your gate? Or you're living in a gated community but you can't drive outside because you're in fear? Because your country doesn't work? Your nation doesn't work? Because you contributing to the theft that making the problem why you can't come outside. That is foolishness. We're sinking our collective boat. We need to turn that around. Stop letting people tell you that somehow you're sexier if you have all more money in your pocket. You're not. You're not. You're still going on dead. When Tony Sack got dead and they put him in the box, I ain't if they bury him, I ain't if they cremate him. But he's still same dead as the vagrant who dead that same day. Both of them same dead. Sabga didn't get a better death. He may have had more people in the church, but it don't matter to him because he dead. 
And I'm using Sabga as an example because he was possibly the richest man in the country at the time. But you have to ask yourself, if no matter what I do or what I have, I'm going to die anyway, shouldn't I then use the time that I have so that at least I leave the world better than I met it? So that the people to come after me, especially, and this is to the clowns that have children. If you don't leave the country better than you met it, when you shuffle off this mortal coil, will you leave for them? Because you see, I could argue both sides of the coin this morning. When my friend called in, I called my friend earlier, she was talking about the robbery. And I had to explain to somebody today, we cannot have a nation where people have to choose crime to survive. It is not a level play field. Stop pretending that it is. Stop thinking that these people have access to good jobs and quality housing, but for some reason they're mad in the head and they're choosing crime. That's not what's going on. These people are suffering and they're being used and abused by criminal leaders and, being, and, and having to choose a life of crime. Because I want to tell you this. I want you to pay attention to what I'm about to say. No matter how high you think of yourself, no matter how big the contribution you put in the church, temple, mosque, plate at the end of the day, if your children were starving or your mother was dying for medicine and you needed money to get it and you couldn't, no matter what you do, there was nobody to borrow from, there was nowhere in the state to go and look to, you had nothing left to sell, you couldn't give your blood, there is nothing. The only choice is you or rob people or your family had to die and people going and get robbed. People will get robbed because you will take care of your family. Man must survive. And your loved ones are called your loved ones for a reason. We cannot continue to have a nation so badly run that our people choose crime as an option. Cannot continue to have that. And it shouldn't be so easy for them to get guns. When the police arrested the man who broke into the high law across from Forest Police Station for a loaf of bread and a tin of corn beef to feed his family, I asked myself, how did we get here? Because you could tell me what you want about him. This is a wealthy nation. Nobody in this country has money that they did not get from the wealth of this nation. It may have meandered in its journey to you, but all of our businesses and all of our jobs and everything that goes on in this country is interconnected by one collective economy. And if that economy doesn't work and serve Everybody, we're making a mess for all of you. We need to fix that. We need to fix that. And the Progressive Empowerment Party says, start with housing. Make it so that the average person, a minimum wage earner, could own a home. And the government has a responsibility to make sure that if we have 1.3 million people, that we have 1.3 million jobs. That's our job as leadership, as government. It is our job to make sure that there are enough jobs in the country. Because you see, if there are jobs and, and the cost of living is affordable and you could own a home and you could you could educate your children and you get proper health care, if that is in place and you still choose crime, Hang him in the public square. I will pull the trap door. If because there will always be people who are fundamentally evil. And then you can hang. I'll sit front row eating popcorn. Bust that truth. I don't mind. We have a nation to lead. We have a people, to, a, a, a entire people that need to have a better country to live in. And we have to stop playing smart with foolishness. And we have to stop defending nonsense. We must make sure that there are jobs for everybody, that you could educate your family, that healthcare is proper professional healthcare. Doctor telling me today, our next one telling me last night, they have no needles in emergency, they have no gauze, they have no blood bottles. We're spending $6.25 billion and I'm asking them, where's the money going? Where's the $6.25 billion in healthcare going? Why don't you give Christian Mute? The job to investigate that. I feel you have a better chance at finding out where the six point two five billion dollars, where the fifty billion dollars we spend in healthcare for the past ten years. Keith, I'll support you. Give Christian Mute that work. Tell Christian, go and investigate. Friends and family, all the all the companies that you're part of, let's see some paperwork. And are serious about that. 
because we're spending the money and we have nothing to show for it. Our education is crap. Our health care is crap. We grow no food. People can't afford to live. Nobody could own a home. You have people, husband and wife, both of them working 10 years in the public sector or even in the banks and they will never be able to own a home and you telling me that this is a properly run country? Miss me with that bullshit, man. People are choosing crime because they have no choice. In a country that still to this day have more money than we need. We have too many bandits in shirt and tie. The Chamber of Commerce need to be ashamed of itself. We need to apologize to this nation. And all of these high class bandits, I want to tell you all again, you know. Don't wait for the Progressive Empowerment Party to come into power to change the way you all do business. Eh? Change it now. Because when we come into power, we will destroy your power structure. We will tear that playhouse down. And all those who may have stolen from the public purse, all those who may have made it difficult for the average person to have a life, all those who have made it impossible for us to offer a proper standard of education, health care, food, jobs, home ownership to our people, brace, eh? Brace. If you ain't get your ticket yet, big line Saturday. All of we coming out. If they but well, I mean they got some politics because it's we. But it's all fours. And if you bring a beer, I'll take a drink with you. But in the barbecue line, it's up and running. They have a couple extra tickets outside there. Reach out to Diana, Lima, Giselle, Karen, Felicia. The office open every day, 12 to 3. Come get your tickets. Saturday will be lit. Your vote will decide our destiny. Your vote will decide what you want to be. Your vote can foretell our country's fate. But use it well. This is your role. This is your duty as a citizen of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Do not shirk your responsibility. Do not be found wanting. Do not come across like the corrupt bunch and those who are hacks for hire. Don't come across like them. Love up this country. The red, white, and black, when you see it, you must say, that's my land. And I give back to my land. My country, I love my country. Let us make this a nation of people who are not from here, lie and say they're from Trinidad and Tobago. Let's put our country together. We're 
chipping into that voting boat, boy. Vote them out, but we sing it as we go. When you're voting, vote them out. Sing it as you're going. Vote them out. Vote them out. This is the truth. This is the reality. Everything that is wrong with Trinidad and Tobago is as a direct result of the mismanagement of the PNM and the UNC. And they must not only be held accountable, they must be fired and voted into oblivion. We must remove them as the scourge that has destroyed this nation so that we could rebuild a better Trinidad and Tobago. Darius, Darius Dolly is on the trend. He's the man who's making the pretty shirts we wear. Darius, the PEP wants some shirts that say vote them out on the front. He's the design that first. Vote them out. Stay in your finger. Get ready. Register. Make sure. Vote them out. Darius are seeing them thing, eh? but tell me, design that, eh? vote them out. We want to make those available to the members to buy. Progressive Empowerment Party say, vote them out. This last verse, bro. First time I hear this last verse, I say this man, Tyrone Hernandez, who wrote this song, Listen, people must come first, people must come first. citizens by citizens right, by right. None, of none, none of we are worse, yellow, yellow black, black or white, food shelter, food shelter and food, free movement and speech, free movement and speech. a garden that grows, and one love for each. If it is that injustice is what, what they, they always do. show, when you're voting, vote them out. All they seem to know. When you're voting, vote them out. Vote them out. If it is your politics, it's, it's just a party show. When elections day come, all bandits must go. Register. Somebody said the other day and they post on one of the walls to have a pap to have a papi show, you must have a mama, mama guy. And I say, boy, Chili, all you not easy you now, boy. All you can make everything fun. Listen, the truth of the matter is, we're doing this, we're up and running, the party's strong, we have a real good team. Teams, there are people in this party that are working, members of the party that are contributing to the party that I've not physically met. The party has grown so quickly. And I want to say, Dilworth Braffett, Felicia Holder, Giselle Jordan, Lima Wilkinson, Karen Brown, these people who have from the ground up built this party from nothing we had harry hunt ian griffith M misty autumn day from the very start seven months ago made this party happen there are people who have come on board diana i mean diana is like i can't imagine the party without her we have ken sean you know him as Trini Mamu. We have so many members, and I always hate to start to call names because after I remember, oh God, why I didn't remember this one or that one? Our communications team, Maya and Cindy, the app team, Maya who's do from her hospital bed, she was doing the YouTube, managing the YouTube channel. We have the website team that launching the website on Saturday. We have the, the events team that makes it possible for us to have these meetings every two weeks. Without them, 
The party would have never been where it is already. We are having a barbecue. I couldn't tell you the details. If I wanted to, a team of people doing that, that could have organized a barbecue and sell 600 tickets and, and having to print more tickets and organize more barbecue. We have some, some real thinkers in this party. Men like Rudy Paul. When I see him, I feel... When I see Rudy Curry, the two Rudys, when I see them, I know we're doing something right. We're doing something right. This is a, I mean, we have my, my, my partners, Dave and Gabriel and Andrew and Dami, these fellows, Raphael, who work in the security arm that make sure they just, I was going to a meeting that we had in Barakpur and seeing them sharing videos of the location and where we are and how it's set up and the safety protocols. And I'm thinking, this is a seven month old unfunded party. Somebody reminded me, Ali G in New York. Ali G is not just in New York. Ali G is handling all of the foreign chapters. You see, I shouldn't be calling names because I will forget people. Listen, the Progressive Empowerment Party is your party. It is yours. Come on board and see how easy you will be seamlessly integrated and put the hard, hard work. Suzette and Shamla and Kenneth and David and who are forgetting in the advisory council? Strong, strong teams. People, that, I mean, I... You, if you try to say that you know everything that's going on in this party, you lie. And it's moving at a clip. So when I asked this morning, we had a meeting. How many constituencies do, are we on the ground? They said 14. I was shocked. I was expecting to hear four. 14. And then they read the list of who they're working on. The party is growing at a clip. And when you meet these people, you will see what is building the Progressive Empowerment Party is you. People like you and your family and your loved ones. When you come into the Progressive Empowerment Party, you just feel like you come home. You just feel like you reach home. Yeah, this is, what, this is what we always thought it was supposed to be. This is it now. Yeah? Anyway, let's not go too late tonight. Thank all of you who were here. All of the people tonight in the gym who's watched these videos that made it so that out of my hour that I got to train a half hour was spent talking, we had to have a conversation, eh? Because seriously, we had to talk about that. When we come to the gym, it's the train. Listen, to all the people that I meet out everywhere, all the people who message in, all those who call in, come on, get involved, get involved. If you don't have the time to physically help and you could give us $100, contact Felicia or Shari and, and give a, make a donation. The party needs your help. Come and see what we're doing. Come and see what we're doing. And to all the people, if I have forgotten to call your name, I want you to know. Our DJ, Roger Hart, and his crew, I want to tell you all, we love you bad. We love you bad, bad, bad. We have a PRO. He's a little missing in action right now. But we're waiting to have to, to, to hold him down Saturday because we imagine this is us operating at a lower level. We actually have a we actually have a next gear, and we're going to up our game shortly. When that meeting is called, come out in your tens of thousands and meet the Progressive Empowerment Party, the organization that is going to lay the groundwork, build the bridge, open the umbrella, use all the analogies you want, make a space for all of us to join hands together, one people under one flag. It come in, stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago.